Okay, I believe we're live, Robin. So, Hi. welcome everybody. Um, I'm Sharon Thornton from Free Spirit Fabrics. We're back this week for another live, Facebook Live version. This week we are here with Robin Long from Robin Ruth Design, and I'm very excited to welcome Robin to our uh, Inspired By program this week. Thank you, Robin. We're Hi. excited about it. Um, we um our free spirit fabrics as many of you know some people are just tuning in just want to make you familiar if you are new to us you can find us at freespiritfabrics.com you can go to our website and look over all of our designers and all of our beautiful fabric um robin is here and robin also has her website uh robinruthdesign.com and you can go to her website and check out anything that you would like on her website I would like to remind everybody that you can, in fact, see this uh, broadcast afterwards. It will be posted on our website, it will be on Instagram, and it will be on YouTube, and Robin will also post it on her website. Mm -hmm. So if you want to tune back in at a later date to learn anything or pick up some more information, please do. Please know that it'll be out there for you to uh, view again. Um, please send us hearts, please send us thumbs up to let us know that you can see us and that you're here. Robin, you're in the state of Washington, is that right? I sure am. I'm near Seattle in the big city of Paulsbo, Washington. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't been out there in a very long time, but I know you live in a beautiful part of our country. So, um, you know, let us know where you're tuning in from, you know, so Robin can go back and she can see where we're all tuning in from. We know we have people from all over the world. We love to see where you're tuning in from. Um, I want to get started. Uh, again, welcome to everybody. And most especially, welcome to Robin this week. So Robin, I'm going to turn this over to you. Oh, one other thing, I want to let the guests know that uh, Nancy Jewell will be on. She will be answering questions along the way on behalf of Free Spirit. If she's able to answer them for Robin, she will also answer them for Robin. But at the end uh, of the broadcast, Robin will go in and answer any specific questions that potentially we couldn't have answered um, along the way and ask us any questions. We will try to do our best to answer them um, in the end or at some portion along the way. So over to you, Robin. Super. Well, thank you, Sharon, very much. I'm thrilled to be here. I've been thrilled to be working with Free Spirit now for, oh gosh, four going on five years, um, designing patterns using their beautiful fabrics. So today I'm going to share with you lots of the pretty quilts that I've made, but I'm also, um, this is a great chance, a great opportunity for me also to share a little bit about my technique and, and how it works. So you'll get to see some of that as well. And so I'll be switching back and forth. I'm a one woman show today. My husband, who many of you see with me on the road, is not with me today. So bear with me. I'm gonna be kind of moving around a little bit here and there, but I, I think I got it. So um, yeah, I think I just wanna start sharing by talking about this gorgeous quilt behind me. So this is made um, using the new Philip Jacobs fabric called Silk Road. And I named this quilt Umbrellas Along the Silk Road. The idea for this quilt, um, those compass blocks are um, supposed to look like umbrellas. And I just, these fabrics are gorgeous. I know there's um, some of them hanging behind Sharon that you can see there. But anyway, this um, I made and I'm offering as a free pattern. I'll show you that in um, just a second. But also what I did with this pattern um, that I haven't done in um, probably um, a lot of what I, why I did it is because of COVID is I posted a bunch of videos, some Instagram videos showing the progress of making one of the blocks. So you can um, go to Instagram and you can watch me actually make a block that went into this quilt. So that's just another way um, to find out more about what I do. And it's just at Robin Ruth's design. So I'm gonna share my screen here so I can show you where that free pattern is. So one second here. All right. So this is what my website looks like when you open it. And um, at the very top of the screen, you see new free pattern, umbrellas along the Silk Road. You can actually just click on that or you can um, click on free patterns either way. I'll go to free patterns. 
And you will see here is the free pattern for umbrellas along the Silk Road. It's going to show the quilt. And then there's a link down here at the bottom. You just click that. And then you're going to go right to the pattern. So we'll let that road um, load. And you can see all the yardages and all the instructions that you need are going to be right there. So let me go back here a second. And then also on this page, because I knew you'd be coming to see me today, there's a button here at the top. It says Free Spirit Facebook Live Quilt List. So this is actually going to be a list of all the quilts I'm going to show today. And it's going to tell all of the fabrics, the Free Spirit fabrics that I used to make them as well. So um, that's all going to be available for you to look at. So let me go back here for a second. So I think I'm back where you're looking at me. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. Okay, you see good. that gorgeous quilt behind you. I, just... I know it. So, um, and I'll give you a close up here a little bit later on because I'm going to take it down to reveal another brand new quilt that I just finished um, that I'll share with you um, towards the end. So I think what I'd like to do, Sharon, is now just kind of get into um, my rulers and what I do, if that's okay. Yes, yes. Please let our viewers know, you know, specifically, you know, you're a Mariner's Compass designer and, you know, yes. I mean, many people are going to know, but, you know. Yes. So what I do are, what I've come up with is a way to strip piece Mariner's Compass blocks. So I came up with this idea actually in 1992. A lot of people want to know when I came up with the idea or, you know, what drove me to do this. And um, my husband is a, so was a submarine officer in the Navy and I wanted to make him a Mariner's Compass quilt. And if you think about back in 1992, paper piecing wasn't really a thing back then. Um, if you wanted to make a Mariner's um, Compass, you would buy Judy Matheson's book and you would learn how to draft and put these compass blocks together. Well, uh, rotary cutting was really popular at that time. So I came up with a crazy little ruler in 1992. I don't know if you can see this very well. Can you see it? Yes. This is a crazy little ruler I made to um, make Mariner's Compass quilts in 1992. It's just a spare piece of plexiglass I had with some graphic tape on it. But I made lots of um, quilts with it. And um, then I just set it aside because quilting was my hobby. And then I came back to this um, after my daughter graduated um, from high school and through college. And I came back to quilting again some more. And I launched Robin Ruth Design in 2015. So um, that's where it all kind of started. So now what I'd like to do is just show you, um, I have books and rulers to do this. Um, uh, to show my method. So I'm gonna share my screen again here. So hold on one sec and we'll get to that. Robin, I just wanna jump in quick. I don't mean to interrupt your, your jam, but I just think it's pretty amazing to see how you started with that plexiglass, you know, little ruler and yeah. see now how far you've come and what, you know, an, an adaptation becomes, you know, a product now. I mean, I think that that's pretty amazing. So kudos yeah. to you. I love that. I love that you showed us that. Thank you. It's, it's been a fun venture. It really has. So so anyway, if, can you see now my book and ruler on there? Make yes. Sure. Okay. Yep. So this is the Skinny Robin book and ruler. Um, so they do come packaged together. Um, uh, this makes 16 point compasses in 16 different sizes. And not only Mariner's compass blocks, but also the other blocks that you see there on the cover. Okay, and then I'm gonna forward here to the next one. And this is the Fat Robin. So both of these rulers make Mariner's compasses using the same exact method. They're just based on different angles. So I'll back up here again. The Skinny is based on a 45 degree angle and the Fat, is based on a 60 degree angle. And I'm gonna explain all of this as we go, but you can just kind of, if you look at the compass blocks, the big ones there in the middle, um, you can see that the fat compass has chubbier points and the skinny has thinner points, all right? So, um, sorry, got ahead of myself there. 
So what I would like to do before I get any further is I'm going to give you a fun little quilt show. So this is something I posted, um, oh gosh, a month or so back, um, just a, a show of my quilts out in my yard. It was a beautiful sunny day. And um, I think this might give you an idea of what's possible with these rulers. I know you're just looking at rulers and a few blocks, but there's so many possibilities. So why don't we take a look at that video and um, I'll see if I can kind of guide you through it and um, talk about some of the quilts quickly. So that's my husband. Can you hear me, Sharon? Yes, I can. Uh, I he's see the one back there. Well, so that's an Anna Maria Horner. That's called Midnight Flower Dance. This was the same quilt done with Amy Butler. Here's some Kathy Dowdy seeds and stems. Those are a couple of quilts that I made called New Horizons was the name of the um, fabric collection. That was really fun. Here's uh, Morris Menagerie. So this is done with the stand-in collection of Morris fabrics. And some of these are not free spirit, but um, it's still fun to look at them. That's one I did with some Natalie Barnes and some Scott Hansen, Blue Nickel, my friends in the quilting community. That's the best thing about this quilting community are all the friends I've made. Um, this is a Morris Medallion. I'll be showing you that a little bit later, made with the Morris fabrics. This quilt actually is called Queen Takes Night. It made it into QuiltCon in the modern traditionalism. That was pretty exciting. This is called La Talib Bohem. This is done with Odile Abol's fabric from France. She's a free spirit designer. Rose Window. This one has been really popular. It's brand new. Um, and I'll talk about that. That's so you can get a kit from Keepsake for that. This is Queen Takes Night as well. It just done in a different color. This is the Kathy Dowdy quilt, but done in cape in the artisan um, fabrics. These are skinny compasses. These are done um, in the American made brand solids. I'll talk about those just for a minute, just because of my app. This is called For the Love of Juliet, again, with the beautiful William Morris fabrics from Free Spirit. Bloomsbury Blossom. This is called Living Large Sunflower, and this is done with the Chrysalis collection by Free Spirit, Stephen uh, Wilson. Uh, In a Galaxy Far Away, this is done with Stratosphere by Free Spirit. This is Queen Takes Night, again, just showing it in a colorful version. Uh, this is my seahorse carousel. And then finally, um, another one I did with um, some uh, Wyndham fabrics from Natalie Barnes. So that's a little kind of preview of kind of the variety of projects that you can make with my rulers. Let me come back here. So um, that just gives you a little sense of, um, like I said, some of the different things that you can do. So now I'm going to go ahead and go on and just give you some more information um, about my rulers and how they work. Before I um, switch over, I want to show you something. I told you you could make my blocks in 16 sizes with either ruler. So let me see if I can. Can you see that pretty good? Yeah, yeah so I can see that really well. 16 sizes. Uh, so any block in my system that you want to make can be made in all 16 of these sizes. So this is just a mix. The green ones are fat, the black and white are skinny, but this gives you kind of a sense of um, all the different sizes. So because of the variety of sizes too, that also gives you a lot more um, projects that you can do. So all right, so I am going to go back to my screen share. I need to click faster, don't I? Okay. No. <laughs> You're doing great, Robin. I think it's coming up here. All right, so I say it's as easy as pie. So pie is the basic building unit for making your blocks. Once you've made these pie units, then really the rest of your block goes together really easy. So you see skinny pie on the left and fat pie on the right. So 
whoops, I'm going to back up. I got ahead of myself again. Hold on. Sorry. Okay. So I'm going to show you two videos really quick. They're just like one minute videos, but just the overall construction of making um, my blocks. So the first one is going to be skinny. So here we go. You're going to start with two strips of fabric, sew them together, and then we're going to cut them apart into units using that 45 degree angle. Then you're going to take a regular straight edge and you're going to cut off, I call that the background triangle, and you save it for a minute. It's not wasted. Then you're going to use my ruler, two cuts, the bottom and the top. You're just using the one line on each side of that kite for your size block. And I'm going to demonstrate this a little bit later. We're going to sew that triangle back on and now you have pie. So you've made the basic building unit. And now we just repeat. You're going to take four of those pie and sew, sew them on the next strip. Cut them apart. Use my ruler. Make those same two cuts. You just turn it around and use the other kite. Add your reserved pie on the other side. And now you've got big pie. Those go on the last strip. You'll make one more cut with my ruler. And then you're just going to sew those four units together to make your mariner's compass. You'll uh -huh. put center on it. And then there's lots of different ways to finish it, finish them. And um, I'll show you that as well as we go. So that's now really awesome, Robin. <laughs> it's as easy as pie. You make it look easy as pie. I know. Well, it's just <laughs> it's just really cut, press, so you know, you just keep going around and all of a sudden you have a compass block. So now right. all that goes really fast for some people. So I'm going to show it in the fat version too. And sometimes by the time you've watched the fat version, then it'll kind of make sense. So here we go. This is the fat. So you're going to see it's the same exact process, except we're going to cut those at a 60 degree angle instead of a 45. And then after that, it's exactly the same. We'll cut off those background triangles and save them. We'll use my fat robin ruler to make those two cuts, the bottom and the top, again, using the one line on each side of that kite for your size. Take that triangle, sew it back on, and now you've got fat pie. So you make your eight fat pie, reserve four, sew four on the next strip. Cut them apart. Use my ruler, same two cuts. You just turn it around and use the other kite. Add your reserve pie on the other side. And now you've got fat big pie. Those go on the last strip. One more cut with my ruler. So those four units together and you've got a fat Robin Mariner's compass. So notice the centers are a little bit bigger on the fat compasses. But yeah, same finishing methods as well for those. And if you're having trouble deciding, in the skinny book, I give an apple pie recipe and the fat book, it is coconut cream. So there you go. <laughs> 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 that's awesome <laughs> okay so now hold on i'm sorry i gotta pause this i'm going to show another video so because i'm just videoing on my own i couldn't do all of the live videos that i wanted so this one was kind of pre-recorded but anyway it's a really great video again just to kind of show the process only using real pieces not a video version so I'm going to um, hopefully get it going and have the sound going. Can you hear it, Sharon? I can see it, but I can't hear it. OK. Give me a minute here. I'm going to try to pause it and turn the thing on. And we're going to go back to the beginning. Here we go. Hopefully. And now I'm going to give you a real life overview of how this process works. So we'll follow along with my little paper overview um, here first. So you're going to start by sewing your first two strips of fabric together. So the skinny and the fat. And then you're going to cut those strips apart at an angle. So you're going to cut 45 degree angle for the skinny and a 60 degree angle for the fat. So the skinny units look like this and the fat units look like this. 
Then we're going to take those units and we're going to chop them up. So you're going to cut off the background triangles. You're going to use my ruler. You're going to make these two cuts, the first cut and then the second cut. And then you're going to take these triangles and sew them right back on to make pie. So we've got skinny pie and we've got fat pie. So you've made eight of those. You're going to reserve four and then you're going to sew four pie on the next strip. You're going to use my ruler again. You're just going to turn it around and use the other side, but you're going to make those same two cuts. You'll make the first cut and then the second cut. Then you're going to take your reserved pies and sew them on the other side. So now you've got what I call big pie, skinny and fat. Those four big pie go on the last strip. You'll make one more cut with my ruler, and then you simply sew those four units together to make a Mariner's Compass block. All right. Come this is back. great, Robin. Yeah, so good. So that, it just helps to for people to actually see the process. So um, I want to just go back here and see. So yeah. Um, now I'm going to show you what's possible, some of the blocks, and then I'm going to actually do in a couple minutes here, we'll get ready, Sharon, if you want to talk um, when I get ready to get set up for an actual live demo here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide here. Are you saying you want are you? Not yet, not yet. just in a okay. few. Okay. So let me go back here and... Sorry, I'm a little bit not used to doing this very much. So I don't... know we're all learning, Robin. Don't worry. This is great. <laughs> I just wanted to show you with that skinny. So you can see the compass blocks, um, the skinny and the fat, but then all of these other variations. So you always use the ruler the same way, but um, you can actually, by changing up the steps a little bit, you can make all these variations as well. So there's compass sunflowers, there's sunflowers, there's round sunflowers, quarter halves. So it's just a lot of other um, things that you can do with the blocks. Um, so I'm gonna come back here and show you. All right, so when you finish your raw block, I just want to show you what it looks like. This is a raw skinny block and this is a raw fat block. And if you look kind of close around the outside, do you see how it's all wonky out there? It's because I built extra room out beyond those points for finishing your block later on. So you never have to match anything on the outside. So some people think you have to finish with a per perfect circle. No, that's all gonna get trimmed into different finishing ways later on. So the different finishing ways, and all of this is in the book, you can either applique the block onto your background. So if you look close, I'll get it right up here. This has just been a straight stitch, just applique that block right onto the background or you can sew it into the background. So what I've done is cut a circle out of this square and I have sewn it into the block. Um, also in the center of the block, you'll notice when you're done, there's a hole. So I call that a creative opportunity. So something to do in the middle. So a couple of things about the hole in the middle. First of all, it makes your blocks come out better in the beginning because they're gonna lay flatter. Um, when you have a block where all the points come in the middle, it's really hard to get that block to lay flat. So it's a good thing that that hole is in there. But um, I, there's different ways to finish it. You can do an applique center or you can do reverse applique. So those last four points, I have folded them under on the back. I put a piece of fabric on the back and then I just sewed around the front. So see, there's a square in the middle. So you don't even have to put a circle in the middle if you don't want to. And then the next thing that's exciting- Robin, huh? excuse me one second. When you just, when you did that square one, uh -huh. to, uh, uh, to do that, are you applicating it? like by machine or how are you? I just did a straight stitch around there. I put the fabric Oh, up okay, I see it. And I just straight stitched right around it. Oh, that's awesome. I'm trying to 
tell people you don't have to kill yourself to make these blocks. Yes, I like that very much. <laughs> All right, so then I've got actually a no circle finishing technique. You can make a whole compass block and never cut one circle. People look at me like, how's that possible? Compasses are round, right? Well, you make your raw block. So here's a raw block that I've made um, using this technique. So in the fourth chapter of the book, there's different tables for cutting. You actually cut your background strip wider. And if you'll notice, see how there's more room beyond the points all the way around the block. Gives you more, more room to play with for finishing. Then you simply square that up twice because you've got extra room. So I'll hold this back. You square it up this way, you square it up this way, and guess what? You have an octagon. You take that octagon, <clears throat> sorry, and you add four triangles and you have a finished block. If you make those triangles the same color as your background strip, can you tell that I didn't use a circle to finish that block? No. <laughs> so, and then I fussy cut a flower for this center. I did reverse applique for this center. So neither of these blocks did I cut a circle for. Wow. Isn't that fun? That's really amazing. Yeah. So there's just lots of ways to do it. So I think Sharon, now if you want to talk, I'm going to get set up for my little live demo. Okay. And that sounds great. I'll drink a water because my throat's dry. No problem. Okay. So, um, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions when you do come back, though. So I, at this point, I'd just like to uh, welcome all of our viewers to our Inspired by series. We are here this week with uh, Robin Long of Robin Ruth Design. So welcome, everybody. She has given us some fantastic tips already on how to make these uh, Mariners compass. Um, I know I've learned quite a bit just sitting here uh, observing what she's shown already. And uh, thank you, Robin. We're so glad to have you here this week and we're happy to have all of our viewers. It looks as though we have quite a few viewers um, and we thank all of you for tuning in. Uh, if you're interested in Free Spirit Fabrics, you can go to our website at freespiritfabrics.com and you can find out any information that you would like um, about our fabrics and our designers and uh, you can purchase them through your local quilt shop. So we do encourage you to go there. The quilt that Robin has in the background is a snow leopard um, collection and that was Silk Road and that shipped to stores in May. And Robin, I love that quilt. That is just a great use of um, that collection. It's a beautiful collection. So you go to your local quilt shop, you may be able to still find the fabrics. Um, I actually have one of them. I don't know if you can tell, it's not Robin's quilt but over this way behind me, I just can't see myself, so I don't really know. But this is a snow leopard quilt. And all of the fabric behind me is uh, from Lorraine Turner, uh, Calico Horses. And Lorraine is a brand new uh, designer with Free Spirit Fabrics. This line also shipped to the, to the uh, quilt shops in May. So if you are interested, I'd like to kind of show you some of this. You know, get some beautiful horses here. Um, there's cactus or succulents, and here are some more succulents. I hope you guys can see this okay, because I can't see myself, so I don't really know what you can see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's some beautiful lupins. These look like horse tails, which I think is so awesome as well. And then we've got some horse backs as you look down, and this is like the main print. Um, Robin will have something to show you in a little bit. I'm not trying to give too much away of this fabric. And then to my right over here, some more of the horse tails. I don't know that that's the proper name, but that's what it looks like. Uh, some lupin and some more of the horse backs, more horses. So we've got you know quite a bit back here to show you and it's really a fantastic line. And I know that when Robin received it, she really loved it uh, you know, with her background and horses uh, and everything. So it was very inspirational for her. So I want to remind you, you can go back and look at this whenever you would like this video. We will be posting it. Please ask us any questions. Uh, Nancy's on and she's answering questions. Robin will answer some questions as well. I'm going to try and scroll through and ask some questions. 
Um, Connie Winter says, Robin teaches great classes on Mariner's Compass. Uh, I can totally see what you do, Robin. Learned so much here already. I'd love to take one of your classes. So you have to head towards the East Coast. That'd so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking because it looks as though, are you ready, Robin? I think so. Can you see my screen share? I can. Okay. Uh, actually, can you turn it the other way though? Can, um, or, or not? Because it's going uh, vertically, not horizontally. Yeah, it's just going to be this way, but it's just, okay. oh, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Best I can do. <laughs> that's, that's, we're good with the best you can do. The best you can do is great so far. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to actually show you how my rulers work. That's the thing people do. They watch those videos and they look at me and they're like, yeah, but really, how does that ruler work? So I'm going to show you in real life. Um, this again is just the overview. So I just kind of want to get you up to speed where we are. So again, you sew your first two strips of fabric together and you cut them apart at the ankle. You cut them at a 45 for skinny and a 60 degree for fat. And these are the units that you get, right? So skinny here on the left, fat on the right. And then we're gonna chop these up as I just showed you in that previous video to make our pie unit. So I'm gonna show you how that I make those cuts. So I'll do the skinny one first, and then I will do the fat. So here's my skinny unit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off this background triangle. And so you can take any straight edge ruler. I have a, a what I call an angle ruler. Um, this ruler I sell on my website, it just makes life easier because the angles are in the middle of the ruler instead of on the ends. Most straight edge rulers have a 45 or a 60, so you can use your straight edge ruler. But sometimes it's kind of like wielding a sword. So when I'm make, cutting these units apart and I put the 45 on here, that's how I, um, oops, it helps if I get the 45, I've got the camera right in front of me. That's how you use it to cut the unit. So it just helps if the um, angles are more in the middle. So this is just the ruler that I like to use. So the first thing we're gonna cut off this background triangle and you might think, okay, I'm just gonna cut from here to the other side and whoop, and we'd be done. But that is not quite correct. And the reason is if I make that cut, if you can see on here, this side of the triangle is gonna be much shorter than this side of the triangle. We want those triangles to be the same. And the reason that it's shorter is because of the seam, right? So to take into account the seam, we just simply move our quarter inch line to the top of that seam and then keep the edge of the ruler on the point on this side. So quarter inch, then the edge of the ruler. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make that cut. So you'll see when I pull that off, see how there's a little tiny triangle there? That means you did it right. So we're gonna set that aside for a minute, okay? And now I'm gonna make the cuts with my Skinny Robin ruler. So here's what the Skinny Robin ruler looks like. You'll see it has a kite A and a kite B. I call them kites for obvious reasons. Um, I'm not gonna go into great detail here. I just kind of wanna show you how the ruler works, but um, one little note is all the solid lines go on seam lines, dashed lines go on raw edges. So that kind of helps you use your ruler. We make two cuts. We make left and low and high and right. It looks like there's a lot of lines and numbers, but it gets easy because all we have to do is use the line for our size. So I cut strips for a 12 inch block. We're just gonna use the 12 line. So for left and low, I'm gonna use this solid line here that the 12 is on. And then for high and right, I'm gonna use this dashed line over here. So you put your unit down, you say to yourself, left and low. You find the 12, it's on a solid line, so we know it goes on a seam line. There's only one seam line. Pretty easy. You find the seam line and put that 12 on the seam. Then the bottom of the kite is a dashed line. Those go on raw edges. So you just slide that ruler down so that the 12 is on the seam, the dashed line is on the raw edge, and this is the left and low cut. So you just make that cut, okay? Now we'll make high and right. So you go to your ruler, you find the 12 line. It's the dashed line below the 12. 
I just sort of put my finger under it. And then this center line, this is the only line that never follows that solid line rule. It just simply divides the kite into two. So as I drag this down, I'm not gonna twist the ruler. I'm just gonna drag it straight down, keeping that middle line through the bottom point until the 12 hits. So when the 12 hits, right there at the raw edge, because dashed lines go on raw edges. Then you put the side of the kite on the seam line. That's your second cut. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with the camera in between me and the unit. <laughs> All right, so that's the second cut. Then we're gonna take this triangle and that little triangle there, we are just gonna pull that off. It makes a little tab. That's gonna be a reference point in your construction. So we are going to end up sewing this onto the other side to make pie. So that's how the ruler works. And any block, any variation you're making, that's how you use the ruler. You always just go left and low, high and right. So now I'll show you with the fat. It'll hopefully make a little more sense when you see it the second time. So here's our fat unit, right? So I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm gonna give you a little tip here. So if you don't have your straight edge handy, you can use my ruler to cut off that background triangle. This edge of the um, kite there is a quarter inch line. It's a quarter inch from the edge. So it's a nice solid line. So I'm gonna put again the quarter inch at the top of the seam to the opposite point. And this is gonna be my cut. All right, again, you get that little tiny triangle, right? And we're gonna set that aside. Now we're gonna use the ruler to make those two cuts. So left and low, we say to ourselves, I'm a left and low, I'm making a 12 inch block. I find the 12, it's on a solid line. Solid lines go on the seam line. The dashed line comes down to the raw edge. Get both of those lined up. First cut. Now I go high and right. I find my dashed line. It's gonna come down, straight down to where I just cut. Once it hits, solid line of the side of the kite on the seam. Oops, sorry. And that's your second cut. Then we're gonna pull those little triangles off and this will actually get sewn on to the other side to make fat pie. So the first couple times you make these cuts, that left and low and high and right, it, you have to use your brain because it's just learning the new ruler. But all the people in my classes, by the time you get to the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth, you kind of get that muscle memory thing. So I really recommend making both cuts on each ruler with your ruler for each unit before you go on to the next. Don't do all the left and lows and then go back and do the high and rights. It's gonna take you twice as long and twice as much brain energy. So that is my little demo. That makes sense? Yes, that's awesome. Can you say what you said, the, the last thing that you just said in terms of the muscle memory? Yeah, so when you make, sorry, when you make both of those cuts on each unit, so you do left and low and then slide it down and make high and right. If you do that on each unit, instead of just going through all eight and just cutting the left and low and then cutting the high and right, it just takes twice as long time-wise because you got to reposition the ruler and it takes twice as much brain power. It gotcha. really makes it a lot easier if you make both cuts at the same time. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good tip. Like that tip. Good, good, good. Efficiency. I love that. Efficiency is good. It is. It's very good. I think now we get to look at some quilts. How about that? Is that enough technical stuff to get us? Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, think Robin, I, I think this is great. I mean, it's so awesome to see how you started and how, you know, your rulers and they're totally amazing. We've got people saying some really nice things. Everything makes oh. sense. This is wonderful. Yeah, we've got oh, a lot of viewers and people are saying some very positive things and oh, uh, they're loving the demonstration. So yes, please keep going. Okay, so before I get any further, because I didn't say, I mean, this is like one of the most important things and I didn't even say it. So you, you see my books, right? Um, fat and skinny right here. All my products are color coded. 
okay? Anything green is fat, anything blue is skinny. So when you go to see my patterns, so if it has a blue header, it's made with the skinny robin. If it's green, it's made with the fat. So then you know right away, you know, which ruler that you're gonna need to use it. Wow. So that's just something for people to know. So as I go through these quilts, um, I want to be able to tell you, tell them which ruler, you know, that they're going to need to, to do it. So, all right. So I'm going to share my screen here again. Just a second. Okay. And we'll start showing some quilts. Let's see. Sorry. I think I didn't pick the right one. Here we go. <laughs> the end. I hope people are being patient. Yes, we all are. Okay, so this is one of the first quilts that I made using my rulers. The first pattern I came out with, this is called Mix and Match Medallion. And this of course is made with um, fabrics from the Cave Facet um, collection. Um, this continues to be one of my favorite quilts. Um, You'll notice in the center medallion of this quilt that there's a compass on top of another compass. So remember when I said about all the different sizes, what you can do? Well, so you know now that there's a hole in the middle of your compass blocks when you're done. So the bigger the block, the bigger the hole. So what you can do is just take another block and fill the hole with that. So you can actually layer your compass blocks. Um, on there. So I think I can zoom in. So this is what I'm talking about. So this is, I think, a 12 inch um, compass on top of a 36 inch compass. Whoops. Come back here. Dang it. Sorry. <laughs> That's quite all right. It's all good. <laughs> there we go. I'll get back there. There we go. I'll be, I'll be better with my pinching. I'll pay attention. So this is called, um, yeah, mix and match fat medallion. This quilt has continued to be one of my most popular. Um, this is made with fat sunflowers and this is called Colorful Sunflower Garden. And so the background is just made with solids. I picked three sizes of rectangles in blues, yellows and greens and made a background. And then I went to my cave stash and then I just started making pretty flowers. And again, all the different sizes. This is only half of the sizes you can make with my ruler of blocks. And so I just made a bunch of really pretty blocks and just arranged them in a pretty garden. And there you go, colorful sunflower garden. This next one is one I did with um, Amy Butler's fabric, and this is called Blossom. Um, so this is actually a 72 inch blossom. And I know you're probably saying to yourself, well, I thought you could only make 36 inch compass blocks with my ruler. Well, what this is, is made with quarter compasses. So let me see if I can zoom in there. Can you see out in that outer border? That's actually where the two pinks come together. That's a quarter compass. And so I put together eight quarter compasses in a band and that makes a circle right? So if you make 36 inch quarter compasses, math is fun, um, you get a 72 inch blossom. So um, this is just a fun quilt. So it's a, it's a block in the middle, just a regular sunflower block, and then that's on a band, and then on another, on another, and that builds your blossom. So in the pattern, I give all 16 sizes, so you can make any size blossom that you want to make this quilt. So... That's awesome. All right. And Robin, then, were you good in uh, grade school and high school with math? <laughs> was geometry like an A plus for you? I, well, <clears throat> I did like geometry. I liked math. So my big claim to fame that I, in eighth grade, I was the math Olympiad champion. So this is for the Bi County where I grew up. And um, I had, you know, the size of the school, I had 39 kids in my class. So. It wasn't a ton of competition, but. <laughs> well, even so, you held the title. You deserve it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So so this is a bonus pattern that comes with Blossom. So you get both um, patterns. 
All right. So now I want to stop just for a second too, because you guys have, I've showed you a couple quotes now um, using the 16 point, the skinny and the fat. So you see this book now and you're like, Robin, that one's half blue, half green. What the heck is that thing? Well, this is another book and ruler that works in coordination with the original rulers to take your 16 point blocks and make them into 32 points. So it's a little smaller um, ruler. Um, but it's kite C, as you can see, you use this ruler to make the same cuts left and low, high and right. So it works just the same. But then when you're done, you end up with 32 point blocks. So if you look at the bottom of this picture on the outside on the left is the skinny 16 point block. And the outside on the right is the fat 16 point block. Then you'll see the two middle blocks. Those are the 32 point versions. So what that little ruler does on the skinny makes those green points. You make little pies, I call them, instead of pie. So it makes the green points. And on the fat, it makes the blue points. So it just then you can also make all of those blocks in 16 sizes. <laughs> Wow. So it just kind of goes on and on and on, but it just gives you um, a lot more uh, possibilities. So let's go look at some more quilts here. Oh, and then my angle ruler. So I just, I already talked to you about that a little bit. Um, in the, the 32 point um, book and ruler, there comes a transparency that you see on the left that looks exactly like my angle ruler. It's because you need some different angles to make those blocks. Um, you need a 33.75 for skinny and a 48.75 for fat. You can forget I said that because no ruler in the on the market straight edge has those angles. So that's why I include a transparency that you can affix to your own straight edge ruler to make those um, blocks. Or you can buy my angle ruler and that has all the angles on there already. So that's what the angle ruler um, does. Okay, so let's get into some more beautiful quilts. I'm gonna give you um, a different view of this one a little bit later, but um, this one's called Morris Medallion. I was thrilled when Free Spirit asked me to design with the uh, William Morris fabrics. Um, I've just been a long admirer of, you know, of William Morris work. And it was kind of daunting in a way though, <laughs> to make a quilt with them. Cause you're like, oh, I hope I can live up to it. But um, anyway, I just love working with the William Morris um, fabric. So um, this is a 32 point and you'll see in the middle. So this is a little block and then there's a block in the middle. This is actually three layered blocks to create this medallion. And then in the quarter corners, I've used quarter compasses. Wow. Robin, that's really amazing. You, you know, I remember when you did that quilt, it was a number of years ago uh -huh. and uh, we were thrilled with that piece. You did a beautiful, beautiful job. And um, if people see it in person, I mean, it's beautiful there, but in person, it's even more staggering. Yeah, it is. Um, and we kind, of refer, we kind of refer to you as the, uh, you know, the Morris uh, master. <laughs> I mean, we could give you almost any William Morris collection and you come out with uh, magnificent designs. So thank you for your talent. We appreciate it very much. Well, it's fun and it makes me up my game too, because like I said, it's a little daunting, you know, to work with those fabrics because he's such a famous designer. You really want to do a good job. So they're what fun. You do. You yeah. do. All right. <laughs> so this is um, called Soho Serpentine. So these are New York beauty blocks. So you can actually make New York beauty blocks using my rulers. Um, you need the 32 point ruler to do it. Um, and so I don't recommend making these New York beauties first. I always recommend start with some 16 point blocks before you make 32 point, but it's just showing you um, more possibilities. So again, this is K facet. And then um, the stripes are Anna Maria Horner. I just put them together and you know this um these blocks can be arranged a million different ways but um this was just my rendition it's beautiful too 
All right, so this is dapper time. And as I'm showing these quilts that are digital here, I do have a lot of them here. So if there's anybody out there that wants to see a detail close up or something um, later on, I can do that at the end. So I just wanted to say that. So dapper time, this is made with Tim Holtz. The, um, the line was called dapper. And I thought, well, what's more dapper than a handsome guy with a pocket watch, right? That's right. <laughs> pocket watch. These are um, sunflower blocks, skinny sunflowers. So this is made with the skinny robin ruler um, and the just a variety of sizes that I've um, made. When you make a sunflower block where it's kind of straight around the edges, the blocks naturally come out to a point and I just lock them off to make them look more like gears and then put them in this fun um, clock base. But you couldn't pick a better um, fabric line to do. Um, this watch, although I've seen some other versions in brighter um, colors um, and other colorways, and it's just a fun quilt to make. So that's Dapper Time. So this is um, Kathy Dowdy. This is called New Horizons. Um, this was done, um, this is not Seeds and Stems. This is the collection for Horizons, New Horizons, I think is what it was yes. called. This, horizon. So this is um, the no circle finishing technique. That block in the middle, you'll notice is that is an octagon, right? So no circle finishing, um, it's two blocks. So then I put filled the center with a round compass. So it's a compass on a compass. Um, this is a great quilt to get started with my ruler. So it's done with a fat robin again. This is two compass blocks, the four squares in the corner. So four squares, eight triangles and 12 strips. That's all there is to this quilt. But what's great about it is you can, if you like bold prints, if you like free spirit prints and um, that have lots going on or things that you want to feature, this is a great quilt design to be able to do that. Um, it's really after you make your compass blocks, which are easy now, um, you just add your squares and triangles and you've got a beautiful quilt. So, um, and then this is a bonus pattern um, that comes in that quilt too. So again, another no circle finishing um, quilts just one quilt block with some rectangles and triangles around it but it makes a really um, pretty pretty block pretty quilt this one is called maha surya so this is done with the 32 point ruler fat so um, this is a block on a block on a block so in the middle is a 16 point block and then that's on a 32 point, and then that's on another 32 point. So I've created this medallion. Um, I've also done a reverse applique um, technique in the middle um, where you kind of see that zigzag of blue around the circle. So that's another technique in my book that you can finish. Um, the blocks, um, the centers don't always fit perfectly with when you layer them. So you'll notice between the second block and the third block, there's kind of a blue band. So that's just another thing you can do to highlight. And it just makes another interesting aspect to the quilt. So this one actually was, um, I was selected as a finalist in I Am An Artisan um, Challenge by Kate Bassett. So um, I was very honored to be part of that group. Um, for that quilt. So that was fun. So this is called Midnight Flower Dance. Um, this is done with Anna Maria Horner uh, fabric with her conservatory collection. So what I love paisleys and paisleys work beautifully with my blocks. This is done with the fat robin. Um, so just some blocks and some paisleys put together. Um, this was in uh, the Simply Modern Quilt Mania magazine too. So that's why there's such a pretty picture of it here. And this is called For the Love of Juliet. This is another one that I did uh, with the William Morris fabrics. This one's been really popular too. Um, so you can see I've just made a medallion here in the middle with some, it's a compass and it's surrounded by some quarters and then some little compasses. And then I did some half compasses and whole compasses in the corner. So just a fun quilt. Um, I think this looks like a tapestry almost um, the it way. Definitely I does. I, we think that every time we see that, that that yeah. looks like a tapestry. Sure, Your yeah. quilts are amazing, Robin. Oh, it's fun to show them. And then this is Bloomsbury Blossom. 
So um, this is another one done with the uh, William Morris fabrics. Um, sometimes they're just impossible for me to cut. I just can't do it. So you'll notice the borders, <laughs> the two side <laughs> borders on this quilt. I just couldn't, I couldn't bear to cut those. That fabric is just absolutely gorgeous. And I just think it highlights the quilt. So um, anyway, that's a fun, fun quilt. So uh, hold on here. I got to see. Okay, so next, go back here. Next. So uh, another funny thing has happened to me. You know, it's just been a weird year. It really has. Um, we planned on selling our house this year. And, um, you know, in December, that looked like a really great thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> until COVID hit. And so as luck would have it, we still had to have to go forward with um, selling our house because we're downsizing and moving. But our house went live on the market today. So <laughs> it's been a little bit crazy getting ready for that. So I actually um, had pictures taken of my house two days ago and my house is in mint conditions, never looked this nice. So please don't judge me because it's clean. It's not usually this good, but I just did it for pictures. But I put um, three of these William Morris quilts on my bed. So I'm gonna give you a little house tour. It's like two minute house tour um, and you'll get to see my quilts in real life on a bed. So here we go. All right, this is me getting up and leaving my chair right where I am. So you're going to actually get a little bit of a house tour going into our little dining room area. And I'm going to turn around. There's my kitchen. So if you're interested in buying a house, also. <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time. It was now just listed time. today. <laughs> it's in really good shape. Um, this is actually a 1935 um, Tudor brick house that has been a labor of love for the last 28 years. Um, and so we're thrilled. We're ready to move on though. All right, so yeah. I'm gonna turn the corner here and you'll get to see the first quilt. So this is Bloomsbury Blossom. Doesn't it look great on a bed? It does. Where these quilts belong, right? Exactly. How, how big is that bed, Robin? Is that it's a queen? A it's a full size. It's a full? Okay. Yeah, so this doesn't totally cover the whole thing, but um, it covers most of it. And yep. then this is for the love of Juliet. Oh, look at that. Oh, I know. Love so, the beds too. Yeah. Yeah, I took this this morning. It's not very sunny here today, but you get the idea. Yeah, looks fantastic. Now I'm going down to the master. So this is the, the I this is my always going to probably be my favorite is the Morris medallion. Um, oh wow! Gorgeous quilt. So looks beautiful on the bed with those stripes too. Doesn't it? Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Wow, that's fun to see yeah. it on a bed in you. <laughs> So I'm just turning around walking out now. We don't need to see the whole way down. But um, anyway, I just thought you guys would think that was fun. It is fun. Thank you for showing <laughs> us. <laughs> All right. One of my favorite quilts. I love oh, this one. Oh, this one? Yeah. This yeah. one is, so I have a lot of free patterns on my um, website. So I already showed you where that free pattern tab is. Just go there. This pattern is on there too. This is um, called my compass collection. And these are 32 point fat compass sunflowers. Um, so it's just a, a, a mix of the uh, Tim Holtz. Um, is it provisions? Yes, provisions. Um, yeah. And, and, I, and it was that dapper? No, I think it was later on. It was kind of some of the other ones. I think these are more current, but I don't remember. Sorry. I probably yeah. haven't. Let me look at the sheet and if I find it, I'll tell everybody what it is. Memoranda, memoranda. Oh, see, I should know that. Oh, well, <laughs> we both knew it was provisions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see the background. So yeah, memoranda. That's a gorgeous quilt. And I know Scott Fortunoff loves that quilt. Yeah, so you can see. So while we're looking at the quilting, I have to just shout out to my quilter, Wanda Rains. She does all of my quilting for me because I don't have time. 
And, you know, it's so great to have a quilter who you can collaborate with. Um, I give her very little guidance. I might have an idea or something, but I just let her do her thing and I do my thing and um, it works out great. So thank you, Wanda, if you're watching. Yes, she does a nice job. <laughs> This is um, Living Large Sunflower, the chrysalis version. So I loved making this quilt. Um, there's, this is like a butterfly um, fabric and I fussy cut it so that it creates all these other patterns. And then I also made these really fun butterflies um, out of the fabric too, to applique on there. Does that version have the 3D? Um, butterflies on it as well? Not, not for this picture, but yeah, the actual quilt, that was really fun because I got the embroidered butterflies um, that he makes and, or that their company, Anita Good Design makes. And I think people can make their own actually um, butterflies. And then yes. I had just layered them all throughout the quilt and it really gave it a fun um, 3D effect. So yeah. You really made this come to life. I mean, it's really beautiful. And for the viewers that don't know, Stephen Wilson is Anita Good Design. And a lot of quilt shops carry Anita Good Design, mm -hmm. um, an embroidery program. And, uh, you know, th this is just a fantastic collaboration with, you know, his design and fabric. And then with you, you know, working it up in a very, you know, it interpret you interpreted it beautifully. And then, like I said previously, they made a bunch of um, embroidered 3D butterflies that when we were at Quilt Market were also put on the quilt. So it was truly amazing between the applique ones as well as the uh, 3D ones. So great piece, Robin. Yeah, so this is a compass on a compass on a compass. So I've layered three of them. Yeah. All right, let's see. Um, this is one that I did. Um, this is another free pattern on my website. This is done with seeds and stems. So um, I've made a basket of my compasses and then I fill them with those beautiful flowers designed by um, Kathy Dowdy. And Kathy actually has this quilt. So I hope you're taking care of it, Kathy, if you're out there. Um, I'll, I'll get it from you one of these days. We were going to meet at empty schools this spring to get it back, but that didn't happen. So um, that was this was just a joy to make. Um, her new book, I know she was on last week talking about her organic applique. That actually inspired me to make this quilt. So um, oh. big shout out to Kathy. She's been a great friend and mentor for me. So yes, she's a great quilter as well. Yeah, I'm and sure this, create wonderful pieces together. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. And this is Morris Menagerie, and I think you've got a version of that there. With I do, uh, Sharon. I, that you might want to show a close up of in a different colorway. I think you have. Yeah, can you see that? Now it's kind of dark. Let me see. Oh. Too close. There you go. That's better. Is that better? So in the middle of this, look at that beautiful peacock. Oh yeah, that's better. That's good, Sharon. So I put a peacock in the middle and then it has some foxes. Whoops, sorry, sorry. That pinching can get you every time. Yeah, foxes and hares. Yes, but in the corners. I used my blocks to make ovals, which is kind of another interesting shape. So they're kind of basically half compasses with some um, triangles in between that kind of elongate the compasses, right? To make right. more of an oval. And then I've used some quarter compasses in the corners. So that is Morris Menagerie. So um, I think what I'm going to do now is show you these last quilts in real life. What do you think about that? That sounds awesome. Because right. you know we love to see quilts, Robin. I know. So I'm going to stop share here, and I'm going to have to get up down a little bit. But um, so okay. this first one is called La Tulip Bohem. Wow. Look at that. So this is done with the 32-point blocks, and I'm going to get up close here. So I use some negative space in these. So you'll notice that it looks like there's tulips because one of the points I made in black, the same color. So this is kind of reminiscent of the cottage tulips block that's an applique block, but it's not. 
And then I've added some fun hand quilting. Let's see if I can. Wow. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. So this is La Tulip Boam. All right. The next one, I gotta make sure I'm staying on track here, is Rose Window. So this has been really a big um, hit for me. And, you know, I just, I made this, I started this quilt on the day that Notre Dame, Dame was burning. Oh. Um, I, cause I've been to Notre Dame and when I saw that church building, I thought, oh my gosh, those beautiful windows are going to be gone forever. And so I went to my cave stash because I've got a good one. And I started, <laughs> started this quilt that very day. And wow. It's a quote that I made out, you know, just because I wanted to make. And, you know, that just goes to show you, you know, what people like are usually, you know, what your passion is. So this is a quilt um, that obviously is on my website. But if you want to make this quilt, I designed it um, using current cake skews. Because when I made this quilt, this was just out of my stash, right? But I, I designed it using current skews and keepsake quilts. Um, is kitting this right now and selling um, the kits and the rulers and the pattern, everything you need to make this quilt. So a big shout out to them. They've been a really nice supporter of what I do. And so Rose Window, go there and you can check it out. It's a beautiful quilt, Robin. Yay. The next one is called In a Galaxy Far Away. Let me see if I can... That's a fantastic use of that collection as well. That's stratosphere. Can you see the whole thing? Yes, it looks great. Okay. So yeah, stratosphere, um, it just has all of these great, let's see if I can give you a close up of how the lines are. I don't know, I just looked at it and I just thought of planets. So yeah. another fun fact about me is my daughter is um, an engineer at SpaceX. Um, so she works on the rockets going to Mars. So I kind of have space on my mind a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's beautiful. The yeah. same the things that inspire, right? You yeah. never really know. And all but the different they... things that you can do. So let me just make sure I'm on track here. Yep. Yeah. And so Queen Takes Night. So when you have already seen some of my Queen Take Nights in my show earlier, but this is actually the first design I made with it using the William Morris fabrics and... That's mineral, yes. Yeah, this is done with mineral. And again, using negative space. So just making some of the colors the same and then you get all of these other interesting shapes. So it, it's compassy, but it's also got other shapes going on. Right. It's got a lot of different elements in it. That's a beautiful quilt. Did I love a nice job these. with that. Can I just say I love these back? This backing is my favorite. Oh, I know. We have a lot of gorgeous William Morris 108 inch backings. This could be nice. wallpaper, curtains. Right. Or curtains. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Please go to the website and look. They're absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, and then this was the next quilt that I made. So this, again, on my website, free pattern, umbrellas along the Silk Road. These are all 16 point skinny robin compasses. Just, I don't know, I think four sizes, three or four sizes. It's actually a great way to get started with my rulers and learn how to make the compass blocks. And then I'm going to show you, you're gonna see it for the first time today. Ooh, the big reveal, everybody. Reveals. Robin have here. It looks like Calico Horses by Lorraine Turner. It is. So this is called, I call my quilt, Horses Along, Horses of the Painted Desert. And That's so beautiful. When Sharon had me um, design this quilt, she didn't realize that I grew up on a cattle ranch and grew up with horses. So this was really a fun um, quilt for me to make with the horses. So um, I really you did like a beautiful it. Beautiful job with Lorraine's line. Very nice. This is a great print. She has this great kind of, it's almost like a twall in a way with the different um, 
elements. And then I just highlight it again with this reverse um, applique technique. So this is brand new. So this will be on my website probably later today. Um, the patterns are being printed as we speak. And so um, they'll probably ship out next week. So check my website a little bit later um, on today. I just didn't get a chance. <laughs> Had a I know. Going with my house, I didn't get it up on I my know. website, but um, it's not here in my house yet to send out, but it will be next week. So if you're interested in that. That's um, really amazing, Robin. Very nice. I mean, you're, you're selling your house, you're preparing for it inspired by with the spirit, you know. What else could you throw in there? Anything else? <laughs> something, I'm sure something. So I'm gonna share my screen just for a couple more. I'm just gonna show you what's coming up, give you a little teaser. And then I think I'm going to be done with you. Let's see, is it coming up? There we go. All right, so this is the Lorraine Turner. This is the digital version. So mine turned out just a tinge different. I actually, if you notice around the medallion part, the, um, fabrics are on the angle, but when I actually made it, I wanted it to be easier for people. So they're not on the angle, but I think it's actually better the way I made it. So anyway, live and learn. I never sell a pattern until I've made the quilt myself. So just know that, that they're always going to be checked. So yes. these are some that are coming up um, that are designed for free spirit. This is um, with the Orkney collection. Um, I believe I've been calling this one Tartan Rose. So again, some beautiful um, fabrics there. And then this one is called Orkney Grove. And I don't know if you can see, but this has these, do you see those trees? Yes. I, I just had to have a way to figure out to incorporate those trees. So I've been getting a lot, of, I know this um, fabric has been showing to shops and I've been um, getting some people saying, when's the pattern? available so it will be as soon as I get the fabric then I'll make it up yes then, Robin could you just slide back to that one more time because yeah. I just want to point out one other thing yeah um well first of all the Orkney collection delivers uh to quilt shops in November of this year but what I love so much about this is the way you designed it using both the Mariner's compass which you know obviously draws your eye to but incorporating those trees just makes another design element within, you know, the, the, the design. So it's just, it was really amazing. I mean, when that came through and I saw that, I was like, wow, Robin, you did it again. <laughs> <laughs> so very nice, very nice. So this is William Morris Orkney, as Robin said, and this will deliver to quilt shops this uh, November. It's a beautiful line. It's selling very, very nicely. Oh, good. Well, your fabrics inspire me. So it, it gets my mind going too. And it helps me to come up with fun things. And then this last one I'm excited about too. This is a new um, line by Odile Bolol. Bol I can't. Uh, I, I don't know how to say her last name. Boulet? Bol 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 sorry, Odile. I'm sorry. I, I don't know French. <laughs> this is called The Queen's Dream. And there are some really fantastic um, fabrics little shoes and birds. And I'm really excited to make this quilt. Um, this quilt has been very inspirational for many. So thank you, Robin. Good. It's designed gorgeous. I mean, look at those diamonds with the circles and, you know. Yeah, I wanted it, it just, know, just made me feel like the, something to do with the queen. I don't know why. It's fancy, well, so that's what I, and I, well, she's dreaming about her shoes and her birds. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. And that collection delivers this December to quilt shops. Okay. So for the people that are interested in this collection, um, you know, tell your local quilt shop that you're interested in it and have them order it. And it delivers in December, like I said, but that's a gorgeous quilt, Robin. Again, a fantastic interpretation of our fabric. So we, we love you. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is awesome. So, well, that's, all the quilts and things I have to show for now. I well, don't go too long. No, no, you did fantastic. We okay. loved having you as a guest this week. Thank you so much. Um, we do have a giveaway though. We have, oh. yes. Oh, my iPad just died. So I can't even ask any questions. Oh, oh sorry, everybody. I was gonna show some questions. Um, that's just the way it will be, right? 
The iPad dies when you need it. I'll look at the questions. So, you know, post them and I, I will definitely look at them and try to get them answered. Okay, that sounds great. So the question uh, that I'd like to pose to viewers this week to win, uh, Robin, what do, do you have a, anything to show? Okay, so that's what you're shipping yeah. to the winner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Robin shipping, that's the, which ruler, the skinny? Robin, and I'm gonna send you my angle ruler too. Okay, I'm gonna try to be the winner. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, we would like to know which of these quilt patterns would you like to make as your next project? So which one of Robin's, you know, quilt patterns would you be, you know, after watching this inspired by, we're hoping that one of these patterns has inspired you, which yeah. one has inspired you to make something? And if you could tell us which free spirit fabric line that you'd like to make it in, we'd love to hear that information as well. And there will be one lucky winner who will get the skinny Robin ruler and the uh, book to go with it. Um, and the, the yeah. pattern for the quilt behind you. Yes, so yes. And that'll be next week when that comes out. But yes, so you'll, they'll get the pattern. Okay, sure. so Robin's gonna uh, have the Horses of the Painted Desert. And that's by Lorraine Turner and her Calico Horses line. And Free Spirit is going to send the fabric for the winner to make it. So that's a very exciting gift. So thank you so much, Robin. Yeah, and no I know that Lorraine, Lorraine Turner was watching as well. So thank you, Lorraine, for tuning in. And uh, I know that uh, Philip Jacobs from Snow Leopard was watching as well. I saw his uh, name come up. I have to go back in and see who else. But we have a lot of viewers from all over. We thank all of you for tuning in and watching today. Robin, we especially thank you. Thank you so much. Um, love having you. Uh, very inspirational. You are so talented. I don't know. You must not count sheep at night. You must just be like <laughs> dreaming at uh, geometry. <laughs> the sheep's too easy for you. You've got the geometry, but it's amazing. Thanks for this opportunity. Thanks for having me. I love working with Free Spirit. So lots of quilts ahead. Yes, definitely. We love collaborating with you and viewers, as you can see, I mean, we've been working with Robin for a number of years. She's created many, many uh, quilts um, and, and so many fabric lines. I mean, not just one specialty. And you can see that, you know, her Mariner's Compass works so beautifully with all different collections. It's not just a specific one. And you can re really call out Free Spirit Fabrics beautifully uh, with this technique. So we encourage all of you to go to Robin's website and take a look around. And by all means, come to Free Spirit website and look around at us and let your local quilt shop know if there's anything that you see that you're interested in. And Robin, we thank you again so much for joining us. And we will see everybody next week. We will be here Next Thursday, three o'clock, we will be tuning in with Julie Herman. Um, she is going to be talking about her block in the month, the nebular block in the month in Tula Pink. Uh, so we are looking forward to that next week. So Robin, again, thank you for coming on and we will talk soon. And good luck selling your house. Maybe we did that today too. I know, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great day, Robin. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.